Welcome back to another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, as always, and today we have an excellent guest on the show. He is the leader of the Green Party of Alberta. Uh, he is coming in to sit down to talk about the party, the future, and the run-up to the 2023 election. Jordan Wilkie, the leader, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. So happy to be here. Um, so, Jordan, uh, any politician uh, of any stripes that comes on the show gets start uh, the interview starts off the exact same way, and that is, where does your sense of duty to serve come from? <laughs> yeah, it feels for me very innate. Um, yeah, like, first of all, I'm I'm happy to be here. I'm I'm excited. This is one of my first podcasts, so I really appreciate appreciate you reaching out, Chris. Um, I come from Treaty 6. Uh, I'm in Edmonton, Alberta. And uh, yeah, it's just an honor to be able to have a, a bit of a platform to speak out about some of these important issues. Regarding my duty, uh, it's been instilled in me from generations of, um, you know, a lot of uh, pressure to do the right thing, to uh, look out for other people, and to serve community. Um, so I've had uh, my grandfathers uh, were. Uh, men that really took charge and, and tried to take care of a larger community, their principles, they were in the military, they uh, served the country. Um, my family uh, instilled in me a sense of duty, you know, from childhood. And of course, that made me want to be a firefighter uh, and help other people. And uh, that was my lifelong dream, which uh, it's been an honor to serve her or about 14 years now with the Edmonton uh, Fire Department. And uh, before that, I was EMT. So I've been in the emergency services for 15 years. I was volunteer for about five years with the Red Cross and part of the wildfire, uh, Fort Mac wildfire uh, response there. I was supervisor of the shelter here in Edmonton. Uh, so when Rachel Notley was on the outside doing her press conferences, I was on the inside. Um, uh, helping people get sorted from the terrible experience that they had up there. And so really, if there's anything I can do to help people, it's generally um, my priority. And that's where I've actually, that's where I've come from. And that's, that's my intro to politics and how I ended up becoming the leader of the Green Party. Well, First off, thank you for your service. 14 years as a firefighter in the emergency services is a long time. So I appreciate everything you do and you still do to this day. Um, giving back in the political realm is a beast in itself, in, in itself <laughs> it entirely. Is. Yeah. I, I want to I want to stick to your past for a few minutes. Was politics discussed as a, a lot as a child, or is politics something that you grew into later on in life? Yeah, politics, it was part of the discussion a little bit, but my my family generally wasn't very political. They're small C conservatives, and uh, growing up, I did feel a little bit out of place. Um, I felt like some of the priorities of society were misguided uh, about what we valued uh, specifically and actually made me feel a little crazy. Um, so definitely like I wish I got into politics earlier because I believe that I would have felt like I was uh, accomplishing something or moving towards something but it was a long road to get here. Uh, I was you know the person on the outside protesting. I, I like to be involved with um, NGOs and groups, especially um, anti-racist uh, initiatives and uh, the environment. Uh, but, but really, I felt like uh, society wasn't focusing on the things that would benefit uh, people, and it seemed to be uh, quite unfair. So it took a while for me to come to politics, uh, but. And this is kind of maybe the message that I can give to, to, to the youth out there is that I've been on the outside, I've been marching, I've protested, I've petitioned and petitioned and petitioned, I've met with the MLAs, uh, I've got gaslit by, you know, uh, my MLA and, and said that they do something and they wouldn't and it seemed like a big game. So I finally, uh, especially with having a child of my own and 
you know, really starting to worry about the future in a whole new way because, you know, that, that's where my heart is. Uh, it was time to, to be democracy, to step in. If you see things that are not working correctly, uh, you have to step up yourself because if you're waiting for someone else to do it, it just may never happen. And so that's where politics came in. I had to learn very quickly uh, the political realm. And uh, it's been really exciting because being an outsider, not a lawyer or a career politician like every other leader in Alberta, uh, I have the opportunity to see things from a different perspective and to, to actually enjoy what I'm doing. It's, it's, it's fun for me to learn and to see how we can think differently about what society needs and where our values and our resources are going, especially in regard to our future and uh, the resilience of our children. Now, so, what brought you to the Green Party? Because you, you talked about yeah, your parents being small C conservatives. Uh, right. How does a, a guy from a small C conservative background grow up to be the leader of the Green Party of Alberta? So what was your introduction into green politics? Yeah, it was really exciting for me to finally, when I, when I knew that I needed to get political because nothing was going to happen on its own, we have to make that happen. Politics and democracy is people powered. Uh, so with the Green Party, we can't do it by ourselves and no, no party can make a large change and, and try to change some of the status quo. Uh, look out for, for the people that are, are not being represented or, uh, you know, generally there's a massive, massive population that doesn't even vote in our population. And that's a problem. And that's, that needs, we need new options and we need new inspiration. Uh, we need a party that's a little different. So long story short, when I was looking at where, where do I fit in? And I, and I really didn't fit in anywhere. I, you know, NDP were sort of my gateway drug into the political realm, um, but they weren't doing it. They just, they said one thing, they were doing the other. I was really heartbroken about when the NDP took the proportional representation, um, the, the PR uh, plank that they had uh, from their election platform. They took it out three months before they were elected into power, knowing that they were gonna have power, knowing that the first past the post system uh, allows people to hold on to that power. Uh, we, it was heartbreaking because it just really did show that these parties and and, and all the partisan partisan politics is, is not representing the people. It's not giving people. It's not doing it for the right reasons. There's power hungry or there's corporate interests and yada yada yada. But uh, when I looked at, I just looked at everything. And and it, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to join this party because they might win or they're the lesser of two evils. That's not democracy, that's not representation. So when I look at the value system, uh, the Greens were by far uh, the, the easy choice. And you know, I didn't grow up being green. Uh, I wasn't waving the green banner. Uh, I just basically looked objectively and saw that there was a global initiative. I mean, there's no, no party like the Greens. It's a global initiative. People are like, oh, the Greens are going to come and they're going to go. Uh, they have no idea how resilient the Green Party is. It's, you know, it's in, it's, it's leading coalition governments in New Zealand and Finland and Sweden, Belgium, and Austria and Germany. And we have an uh, incredible set of principles. So obviously the Green is a bit of a pigeonhole with the party. And I guess there needs to be a bit of a rebranding when you think about it, because this is important in this conversation, because I'm not strictly an environmentalist. I care about the future and our ecological ability to stay alive in this um, biosphere. But what I care about also is, is social justice and respect for diversity and nonviolence and sustainability. So ecological wisdom and, and uh, participatory democracy, a, a more robust and people-powered democracy, those are the principles. So ecological wisdom or sustainability is just important as social justice. So people don't really understand that we have six principles and they're not interchangeable and one is not higher than the other. And you know, that's what you know, people like Naomi Klein are saying when they talk about 
climate change and our need to act. It's you can't have uh, environment justice without social justice. You can't have it without uh, more democracy. If these are part and parcel and they're, they're the principles um, and that's exactly what the Green Party has. So these, this party already exists. It's just, I feel like, especially in Alberta, it's uh, a little bit demonized that it's anti-industry when it's not, it's actually looking towards the future and, and looking at industries that might complement a diverse economy. Um, but when I looked at the, the parties objectively, there was actually, it was the easiest choice I ever had to make. And um, that's where I jumped in and I jumped in with my heart and, and I started uh, organizing events for them. And, and all of a sudden I was uh, asked if I would be interested in joining the party. And uh, it was a bit of a stretch for me, but again, you know, I have to think what would my, what would my son want me to do? And where is this opportunity to really give the people of Alberta another option in politics? I mean, there's so many people that are just so disenfranchised, including myself at the time, um, especially after watching what the NDP did when they called the Leap Manifesto betrayal and, and all this rubbish that would have put us so far ahead um, in 2022. But, uh, watching that happen and, and, and just knowing that we need something else and the Greens are established, they have a global chapter that like this isn't coming from, this isn't just a made up um, party of, oh, what, what could the world be like in a fantasy world? This is rooted in a global push and a movement that is important. And I know that even on social media, I always see uh, activists and environmental activists saying, if only we had a way to to join the world and like make a real uh, movement towards a better future where we could reduce emissions, where we could fight social inequity or economic inequity, and we could just bring people out of poverty. It's like, okay, yeah, this exists. Can you guys just go vote for this, please? But again, we need more education. We need to be more stable as a party uh, because our grassroots uh, foundation also creates a lot of uh, sometimes discord and, and a lot of uh, discussion about um, where the party needs to go because there's a lot of room within those six principles. I mean, those are the, the values of you know, being a good person. So anyone can be a Green Party member if you have those six principles. And if you believe in nonviolence and things like participatory democracy, then you're halfway there. So it's, uh, it's exciting to see how the party's growing. And of course, there's growing pains. And uh, that always happens. So right now, we're in a really amazing position where we're getting ready for the next election. And uh, I am going off on a tangent here. So do wheel me back if you have more questions, but uh, I'm excited that the Greens exist. I'm excited to be the leader. And when I stepped up to be the leader, I've just, I've learned so much about the system. I've learned uh, there's so many ways to, to help people through the democratic system that exists. And there's so many people on the outside that believe it's such an exclusive thing. It's like, it's like law talk, uh, lawyer speak. It's, it, it makes people afraid to jump in and be part of democracy. And for me as well, I, I didn't know what I was getting into. And then as you start, you know, taking down the mirrors or however you want to metaphorically say it, pulling back the curtain, <laughs> you re yeah, right. Like you realize it's like, these people are either in it, for their, for their own reasons, some sort of corporate gain, some sort of political power game, um, or, they're, uh, or, or they're literally just playing popularity contests and going off of what's trending. There's no backbone. And all of this uh, jargon, political jargon, it's just keeping the people that really need to sit in these positions, the you know indigenous representation, Métis representation, um, the, the people of color, the, the people that are working class and, and having hard time putting food on the, on the plates for their children. Like the, this is not some sort of exclusive uh, 
group that you can't get in. You just put up your hand and you start learning and you start making mistakes and coming back. But as long as you have the backbone and the heart that you want to help other people. And as we talked about having this duty to, to, to serve, and, and that's what I've been doing all my whole life. I, uh, you know, I've, I've served as a humanitarian. I've served uh, within the fire department and I help people that I don't know every day. And I love that because you, I do see everyone is interconnected just as I see that the environment is interconnected and you can't just, um, can't use people. You can't just use the environment because it comes back and that's, that's karma, but it's also uh, basically the narrative that we're seeing all over the province, especially when we talk about um, our economic future, we're not having the right conversations. And I think that if we can have more just people that care involved in politics, we're going to start having those conversations. And that's, that's where I'm coming from. And that's really what, what I want out of this leadership is uh, I don't have all the answers. I, you know, I want to hear from you. I want to be, um, I want to represent the people of Alberta, all the people. And I don't see that happening. I don't see the people being represented properly. And so, yeah, if we don't step up and do something, if we think that we're going to just protest and walk away and pat ourselves on the back and think that we've made change, unfortunately, we have to jump into the system and it allows us, if we can get people inside these halls of power, it allows us to fix um, the, the system and some of the injustices that are taking place within our, within our society. Um, awesome. first off, uh, I will never interrupt a guest because especially one who likes to talk, because if you did not talk, it would be a really bad show where the interview would be very <laughs> one-sided of me just talking and the guest not answering. So you want to take 10 minutes to answer a question? <laughs> Go right ahead. I love it. Because that's the <laughs> nice great guess. thing about this. We're outside of the 15 second sound bite. And the, the listeners who are listening to this right now understand that you get the entire show. You don't get the cut up version of it. It's the entire interview because we sorely lack that in journalism these days where we take that 15 second sound bite and we take it out of context. So I will never interrupt you. Well, I'll probably, I, I might interrupt you if you say something very weird and I need clarification, <laughs> but overall- Sure, I yeah, to. please do. There's a lot of things that you have said in the last five minutes that I need to unpack here. Okay. I, I want to start by the rebranding thing that you started off with. Um, Great. Because you said, and this is where uh, I, I, the journalism comes out in me, is you're not someone who wants to shut down the, 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 the industry, the energy industry right away. You want to look towards mm -hmm. the future. Now, Absolutely. the very first thing anyone thinks of when you think of the Green Party, no matter what province you live in, is anti-oil, anti-everything. You're basically want to shut everything down, take put the workers out to pasture and just not support them anymore we live in one of the most energy industry well natural resource sector provinces in the country if i'm not mistaken as saskatchewan might give us a run for its money when it comes to uranium but alberta is oil country how do you rebrand yourself to say we aren't that party that you think we are we aren't the party that wants to shut everything down tomorrow and move into an energy, uh, a renewable energy industry, we want to transition. Because I think there's a lot of people who might listen to this and go, he's out to lunch if he thinks I'm going to vote for him, because I hear what the other Green Party leaders are saying, and they want to shut us down. Mm -hmm. So how does that rebranding work, where you are the leader of the Green Party of Alberta, and you have a province where it is very energy heavy? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, so we're oil country, go Oilers. <laughs> uh, my dad played for my dad played for on the Oilers. He was a goalie uh, when they're in the WHA. Um, so yeah, I, I get it. I, I get the narrative. Um, I get the narrative that we have. Uh, some of the other leaders haven't done Alberta Greens any uh, services uh, by saying things like oil is dead. Uh, that that hits pretty hard. Uh, but when we, you know, when, 
here's a little tangent. When we talk about death, that's again, something that people don't want to talk about. We don't want to talk about death. Um, so with Elizabeth May, and I, I salute you, Elizabeth, I know you're doing your, your best and, and you're looking out uh, for the environment as, as, as best you can. But we do need to have this conversation. It's like death. You do have to have this conversation. You will die. This, there is a, this is something that we need to talk about. Within my job, I, I'm around death all the time. So it's something that we can't hide from. Um, so we do need to be having these conversations. Greens want to have these conversations so that we can get out ahead. Uh, and we know that we're in the boom and bust. And right now, luckily, we're booming. I mean, luckily for the UCP, because they've thrown all their cards into it. Uh, so that's not Kenny being a genius. He just is going to get lucky here. But when it rains, it rains. And when it's drought, it's bad. It's bad. So where's our resilience? You know, I have a master's in disaster management. That was another reason why I wanted to take on this role is because we're constantly in emergencies. We're constantly in these boom and bust cycles. And that's not just our economy. Uh, that's our that's our way of life. That's our farming. That's our, our ability to to withstand you know, wildfire as things change and our supply chains are cut off and what you're seeing right now with our supply chain. But I will go back and answer your question, Chris. Green Party has no policy to shut down the oil sands. I'm just going to say this right now, just so everyone can stop asking me questions about this. Um, actually, when the CBC calls me, I'm always like, oh, wow, the CBC, know I, they know I'm alive. And then uh, what do you think about this pipeline? Well, they, they, know, what they, they know what they want me to say. Uh, pipelines are bad. Well, you know what? We actually have an incredible pipeline infrastructure. Um, we are moving oil. We are moving oil, hundreds of thousands of barrels. Uh, do we need to expand this right now? I think that the expansion of the oil sands is where we have to stop and think. The expansion of our pipeline system, as robust as it is already, we have to stop and think, is this the way? Is this the future? And I would say it's not the future, but it is definitely part of uh, our economy. There's a lot of jobs involved, and I think that we need the sector. Um, I'm not saying that we don't. What I'm saying is until we can get our heads around how we're going to clean up, the reclamation issues, then we can't expand. And you saw what happened with the frontier mine. It was, you know, these are these are good examples. Or the uh, the, the 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 Keystone XL pipeline, the gambles. Um, you know, what did what did Frontier do right after that? Uh, or that or that company Tech, I believe, uh, they went and opened up solar. And we have. Hey, here we go. Here's the here's the solar pitch. But we are on par with Florida for our ability to harness the sun, because we have an advantage here. We have the most sun in, in all of Canada. Uh, we have an advantage because it's cooler here, where, whereas the solar panels are allowed to take in more energy. We at one third of our territory is optimal, not just good, optimal for wind power. Um, right now, wind power, wind power is you know, producing more energy than coal, for example. We've, we've, we've gone past that line here. And so things are going well. Uh, these, these industries, and we're, we haven't even talked about hydro in this province. We haven't, like, we're using 7% of our hydro capacity. Um, there's so, so much we can do with hydro that we're not doing, especially for First Nation uh, communities that are, are, you know, have hard time with uh, supply chain and things like that. We, we have this ability to, to harness the Athabasca and uh, Edmonton can harness the North, the North Saskatchewan. Uh, these are conversations that we need to have. So I'm saying, let's, we're not trying to shut things down, but we need to have a conversation. And one of the biggest conversations we need to have is the oversight of these groups. And uh, the Alberta Energy Regulator is basically the fox guarding the hen house. Um, it's not actually looking out for the future, uh, the next generations. And until we can get oversight, proper oversight regarding the detrimental effects of uh, the pollution and not just emissions. And I know everyone is, is 
hardcore about emissions and they want us to look over at the uh, carbon scrubbers and carbon capture and we'll just we'll just keep polluting the same way we have always been but don't worry we'll set up these these scrubbers and it's going to work out great it's not working out great um by the way uh and it's just another way for us to carry on with business as usual but uh the youth don't care the youth want to see change the youth, the decisions that we make today are going to impact the youth more than anyone else. So this is where the youth really need to get part of this conversation. And we need to have these conversations more because the youth don't care about your portfolio and your retirement plan uh, with your investments in, in the petrochemical industries and things like that. And if we were gonna talk about investments in the petrochemical industry, well, why aren't we talking about things that are also uh, a net positive like we have the most incredible petrochemical engineers in the country here, uh, geniuses. Uh, why aren't we looking at proper ways to recycle plastics? Um, I mean, this is something the whole world needs. If you want a, uh, if you want a new industry, let's look at that. Uh, we have uh, orphaned wells and abandoned uh, wells that uh, are sitting there and and need to be re reclaimed. Well, that's a job boom and. And we're not seeing the billions of dollars that are coming from the uh, federal uh, and, and, uh, and provincial uh, green initiatives go to uh, the working class and to people that need jobs within the, the conservation and reclamation jobs, uh, not to mention all the, the emergency mitigation jobs we need to have with a changing climate. Uh, this is an opportunity of a lifetime to get control of our oversight before we expand. So not, again, I'm not saying shut things down. I'm not saying this is the end. I'm saying, what are we, let's have a proper conversation of what can work and what can't. What are, what's our capacity to uh, mine lithium out of the, the, the wells that we've already drilled? It's high, why aren't we doing that? We know that's a, that's a industry we need. We need to have lithium. That's where the world's headed. So the Greens see that, and we're wondering why we're not doing that. Why don't we have geothermal um, greenhouses where we're growing so we can get around this um, supply chain issue with, with our ability to have food security and, and, and the water security? Why aren't we using geothermal to power greenhouses? Why aren't we uh, utilizing the solar capabilities? Why aren't we using the wind capabilities? Why aren't we building the green infrastructure that's gonna bring I was about to say millions of jobs. Got a little excited there. Thousands of jobs uh, for the Alberta economy. I mean, if you want jobs, green is jobs. So climate action is job action. It's that simple. And what we're seeing right now is this constant uh, protection of today's industry uh, without looking out for the worker. And the worker is going to be put out on the street at some point because we know that this can't go on and on and on. We need to have a diverse economy. And that means creating efficient, effective oversight for the fossil fuel industry that exists today and expanding towards that transition for tomorrow. So you can't just sell off today. You can't just, for, you can't just sell off our forests and sell off our, um, our resources and pollute our water security. Uh, you know, I won't even get into coal right now. Uh, and then and then think that you're going to be okay tomorrow. And right now, I think we have a big problem with understanding what resilience is and valuing resilience. And when we can finally get our heads around what resilience means and why it's important, we'll stop just asking for the crumbs and we'll start demanding that we get more out of our government, uh, more out of the beautiful, incredible resources that we are, we are so, you know, we, we, need to, we need to take care of our province instead of just selling it, instead of just mining it. There's ways we can be more reciprocal. And that, you know, gets us back to learning more from uh, indigenous communities, uh, the land defenders, having these conversations, having these dialogues, having open dialogue with First Nation communities that have been you know, basically warning us since the, the dawn of time. And we fail to act 
because we as a people do not put enough value on tomorrow and that's what the green party is we're the party that's looking not just today because today that's easy yeah let's sell it off gdp let's let's go kick ass um right hurrah but what about our kids and you know, what about our retirements and what about as we age i mean that, what about our medical uh system what about our education system for tomorrow this is all integrated and when we think about green jobs too all right everyone think about a green job what did you picture three two one probably a guy on a roof with a solar panel right but any low carbon job is a green job so again when we talk about rebranding with the greens, uh, we have to break out of this, this idea that we're, we're shutting down in industry because we're the ones waving the big flag of this is the, un this is the unemployment solution. This is the, um, uh, the employment opportunity of a lifetime, the largest job boom in Alberta history can happen if we look past what the current politicians are saying is our only hope, which is a lie. Our only hope is that we start cleaning up because that's employment and we have the funding and there's a lot of opportunity there. We have to look at conservation. We have to change some of our industry practices. We have to change some of our oversight issues. And we have to look at the mitigation issues with climate change. Because if you don't act now, you're screwed. And I think another rebranding thing I can talk about is uh, if there's like a 2001 idea of what the Green Party is, uh, which I, is going to be tough for me to break out of, and I said, put some solar panels up on your home and, and you know, buy an electric car and you're doing your part and, and everyone needs to do their part. Well, it, we're kind of past that. And as a disaster manager, this is where I'm putting on my disaster manager hat. We have to do so much more than um, put up a solar panel. But at, at the same time, do put up a solar panel and not because you're going to save us from climate change because that's not realistic, but the grid is going to fail. We have so many issues with what's coming with climate, climate disaster. And that's our water security. What are you doing? You're in the city. You think you're going to be okay? Well, I, I don't know. Maybe do some, do a deep dive. Water security, food security. How are you going to stay warm at night when the grid fails and it's minus 30, right? Gold in BC just saw that um, a month ago. And it was, I mean, that's a very resilient community and they are having a very hard time. Not in Canada, and, uh, but Texas saw that last year as well. We saw Texas yeah. go completely dark. Absolutely. Their grid was so old that it was dilapidated that you saw literally Texas freeze. Who would have thought you'd say that sentence in 2021? <laughs> I know. I know. And guess what? Climate change causes, uh, uh, you know, massive freezing and, and, and extreme events in areas you would not think of. Um, and, and so... These are issues all over the world that people need to deal with. And, you know, we have a very resilient, incredible population here, um, but they're not necessarily thinking towards what is necessary for resilience. And again, I'm going to keep coming back to this because until we can value that, um, there's no point in voting green because right now, if you're just going to talk about what, what's good for today, um, well, then, then it's just, you're going to sell off everything you can, right? That's, that's what you do. Uh, if you want to build up for tomorrow, then vote green, get involved and support us because we need your help. And we need uh, people that are as resilient as Albertans to start stepping up and showing the world what that looks like and how we can be that optimal population for that showing, yeah, okay, we have these, you know, similar to Norway, we have uh oil resources great that's fantastic actually that shouldn't be our, our our identity our identity before that was we're the gateway to the north and and we're agriculture and and you know this is a trading communities yeah so what's what's our identity it's flux it's transient it always is and always will be and i think that we need to get our heads around that and we need to keep having these conversations and i don't again don't have all the answers jump on my twitter light me up tell me i'm uh I'm out to lunch. Great. Let's have this conversation. 
um, you know, uh, at Jordan Wilkie GPA, uh, please, you know, I'd love to have that conversation with, with the people of Alberta. And anyone um, who's ever so listened much... to this show and watched the show yeah. before knows what I'm about to say. Link to his Twitter's in the show notes. So literally scroll down if you're watching this on YouTube. <laughs> it's you. right there. Yeah. If, you're, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, go back a page and there it is. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the joy of today. It's you can reach out to me directly and you know tell me how you feel. But let's let's yeah, let's evolve the conversation. And if you're if you're mad about something I'm saying or you you, you think that it's not true, let's have that conversation. I I'm open and I don't, I'm not here to say that I'm not here to sell you on anything. I'm not here to sell you on the greens. Um, everyone has to look at their similar to what I did. I, you know, this is what worked for me. Look at your value system, look at your children and ask yourself, you know, where your heart is within the political realm. And if it's not in the political realm, why um, we have to change it. And this is the other cool thing about the greens right now is that we're a smaller party and uh, we've been doing a lot of the, the back end uh, build up. We've been uh, we've we've got a brand new executive council that's incredible and diverse and, and young and, and com coming from around the province. Uh, we have an amazing uh, president, uh, Evelyn Tanaka from Calgary, and we're just we're all volunteers. We're all just working towards something uh, better than what we have. And this is the opportunity. And this is why a lot of youth are showing up. And uh, this is the opportunity to, to be part of that and to help guide us and navigate. Where do you want to take this? Um, you know, if you go to the larger parties, you're not going to hear that. It's, it's uh, top down. This is how we do it. Get on board, start rowing. And <laughs> I don't want to hear any complaining or you're out. Uh, that is not the greens. And this is the opportunity of a lifetime for Albertans because we're on the rise. And, and we have new leadership. We have a new executive. We have a. We're going to have a new website and new database. We've never even done a election with a, a proper get out the vote database. So, look, we're 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 absolutely evolving, and this is our time to shine. So, if you want to get involved, you're act, you're not rowing. <laughs> it, this isn't the rowing, and I'm going to beat the drum. This is where do you want to take this? You're the navigator. Let's get out the maps. Let's let's think of new ideas and get inspired and if we're not working from our inspiration then why are we doing this and that's what i tell anyone who comes aboard that's what i tell people on my shadow cabinet we have incredible shadow cabinet and i just say if you're not inspired then you know let's not let's not do this uh and and the way people show up when you when you start working together collaboratively uh is is just beautiful and it's a beautiful thing so if you're disenfranchised and you don't know where your political home is, make it your home. Um, and that was one of the biggest things uh, I was shocked was uh, I became the leader and I really, I mean, I, re I, the leader before me uh, was Cheryl Shagnon Gray Eyes. She was the first indigenous uh, political uh, or provincial leader in, uh, in Alberta. Uh, and I thought there was going to be this large uh, membership of Indigenous Métis because we're so aligned with people that care about the land, care about tomorrow, uh, stewardship. Any land steward, whether you're a farmer or, or a rancher or, or parks, it's, this is the party, this is your home. And, you know, that's one of the, the big things for me as the leader is how can I, you know, how can I ensure that this is um, a safe uh, home for the indigenous people that are not, not heard in this province properly. They're not represented properly. There's not even active dialogue, province to nation, province to Métis nations. And this has to change. And, you know, this is, this is our chance to have something that will be different and that is not part of the the you know the the colonizing history of this province and and our country we're not a legacy party in that way we are fresh and we have an opportunity and so if you're voiceless this is your vehicle to create change and uh, i invite people that 
are, you know, that, that stand by our principles that are ecological wisdom, sustainability, nonviolence, participatory democracy, um, social justice, respect for diversity. That's it. If you love these principles, if you stand by these principles, then please, please join us because this is our time and we can't do it alone. We're all just volunteers. So I'd like to give people an opportunity for something new and kind of that's where I'm coming from. That's, that's my, my, that's where my heart is when I took on this leadership role. And when we talk about rebranding, that's what I'm talking about. Understanding the principles. I know we got green in the name. Let's just call us the GPA, right? NDP, UCP, GPA. But it is what we make it. And that's the opportunity. So, yeah, I that answers your question. Do you, have, I, I, do, you try, do you have any questions about that? I, <laughs> we pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com, and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Thank you. Because you, you, oh my gosh, you, 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 you how do I say, I'm going to say, I'm going to, this is going to sound like a very ignorant question, but I'm going to ask it in a way that okay. might come across. Yeah, and if anyone who wants to send me hate mail, you know what to do, send it to me and I'll put it in the filing cabinet. Um, you talk a big game though. There's a lot of politicians who've been out there, who have been in your position, who have said the exact same thing. We want to have a conversation. We want to do politics differently. We want to have a better mm. relationship with our First Nations communities. But you said it even yourself. You get elected, things change. You're not the same person that you were before you were elected. Everything changes because now you're elected. So how can people oh, believe you? How can people believe you that what you're saying to me right now is who you're going to be if you are the next MLA, next premier of Alberta? Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't have a perfect answer, answer for that because we have a trust issue. We have a major, major, we major do. trust issue. <laughs> um, wow. So... I mean, even when I got into politics, uh, I, I did a quick little search. So firefighters, nurses, most trusted job in Canada, I believe. And I think it was like politicians and used car salesmen. Hey, if, and if you're a used car salesman, you know, sorry, you also have a lot of work to do. Um, the lowest trust in Canada. And for good reason, because all these, all this lying and all this partisanship politics. I think one of the, the biggest problems is, um, so anyways, I'm like batting 500 here, it's going from firefighter in, into politics. So hopefully I'll get some credit, <laughs> Chris, I'll get a little bit of credit that I've, I've spent my entire life helping people and caring uh, about other people, putting my life on the line to help other people. Uh, maybe there's some credit there, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, we have major trust issues and there's, uh, you know, partisan politics is, it's scary business because you're not looking out for even the people that you're representing, especially in the first past the post system. Um, you're looking out for yourself and the party and you're getting whipped. Um, so what does that mean? Why are you, what, what is whipping? Um, that's when Rachel Notley or her, her group, let's just use, utilize the NDP here. Um, they, and, and this, is, this is what they do. They tell you, you have to vote in a certain way. They tell you, you have to speak in a certain way. Here's your talking points, be a robot and get out there and bleed for us. And that's what we're gonna do. And that's how we're gonna take back power. This is how we're gonna keep power. Great, that sounds terrible. Um, I think that, the Greens have this, and this is another reason why the Green, and I should have maybe brought this up earlier. This is another reason why I chose the Greens. They don't have a whip. They don't believe in a whip. There's no such thing as a whip. So you, you vote the way you want to vote. And so if you have First Nations within your, if you're elected, because we're talking about now being elected and we've made history and, and 
what are we going to do? We need to represent the people in our riding. This is the opportunity again. Oh man, I'm keep saying this. Is it's just a for democracy when you have a party that is not pushing their party line and uh, pushing uh, the the memo from the top. Basically, we're allowing people to be grassroots democracy, and the Greens believe in that wholeheartedly. Uh, so we're kind of, honestly, to make this simpler, we're kind of like a team of independents. It allows you to represent your constituency properly. And within the constituency, there's First Nations, which are treaty nations. They're not in Alberta. They were here before Alberta. So don't get me wrong here. Um, but within this regional line that has been drawn, um, there are communities there that need, that, that need to be um, approached province to nation and those dialogues are important and that's why greens also care about land back we're the only party that's talking about land back we're talking about the right for them to self determine what is good for them and we need to honor the treaties we need to go back and talk about the treaties we need to have these conversations this is crucial because the treaties have been manipulated and it's fine for us to say i'm in six but what does that mean and well for me that's a little bit shameful because are we really following the treaties um a lot of my indigenous advisors would say we are not because of many reasons that we can have a whole podcast about um however that dialogue needs to happen and we need to respect them and the fact that we've now have un uh united nations declarations for the rights of the of indigenous people undrip uh it's not suggestions of how we should act as a province um as the little crown that that is <laughs> mandatory and we need to have proper consent we need to have proper talks and dialogue about the the, the self-determination of the people within these these districts. So if I'm elected into Banff Kananaskis, which is where I would like to run, so I've put in my vetting papers and I, I'm uh, now a, a, a leader has to get vetted. Of course we do. A leader has to get vetted just like anyone else. A leader has to. OK, so here's the other thing. Um, why you might want to trust me or, or is the we have to lead by example. And we can't say one thing and, and do another thing, especially as leaders. I have to put, my, put in my betting papers just like anyone else. I need to uh, raise a certain amount of money just like any, any, anyone else. And I have to do my due diligence. And it's, it's not just assumed that uh, no one, this is the thing. There's a lot of entitlement in, in politics. What? What are you uh, talking no about, said, Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> entitlement politics? What? This, this is new, breaking news uh, on the Cross Border Interview podcast. <laughs> it's happening. It's out there. And oh my gosh, I, I mean, I was going to go off on another tangent. I'm trying not to. Um, I'm enjoying it title. because I'm following yeah. along and I'm glad <laughs> that there's a politician out there who is willing to actually answer the gosh darn question from time to time and willing to give yes, I'm trying to back up because I, I have sat down with politicians from all stripes, all stripes. Mm. And mm. I can tell you, this is the first interview with a leader who I've gone. Okay. I can see where this guy's coming from. He's actually in it for the reasons <laughs> he needs to be in it, but going back to leading by example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how, like I just I'm surprised that as a leader you think you've already been vetted because you are the leader of the party but you're saying no I have to be vetted just like every other candidate for the Green Party absolutely the absolutely I can't tell people <laughs> look it's a, it's the same as firefighting I can't tell people go into this burning building you'll be fine um, I mean that's a bit of an extreme. You know, uh, I have to be willing. My former to, fire I have to be willing to walk didn't. the walk, <laughs> right? <laughs> and and you know, when you become a chief, yeah, I get it. But um, you have to lead by example. And and when when you ask someone to do something, and when you promote something, like I'm promoting today, I am I am promoting our values. I'm promoting some of the, you know, very little uh, of of, the, of our policy and 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 the future and what that looks like and what we represent. I'm not going to 
say that and then you know and what, what's happened in the past especially with parties that, that are smaller and, and need more donations and, and don't necessarily see we're not very fundraising driven we've never been because it's not our it's not our value however you need money to win elections it's just, it's just the way it goes so hey please donate if you can but what i am going to say is that you know in the past especially with the greens it has been very grassroots and people have gone out and not feel, felt supported especially in a in a place like alberta where you know especially when you haven't um, done a lot of training and, and media training or anything like that when you go out you're gonna get you know um some different different types of engagements at the door and and for me we have to stop that we're a family in the green party we have to look after each other we have to ensure that people that go out to to represent and, and to try and uh, represent a, a stronger democracy and we really need a third party and we can get into this later but politics in alberta is it's vile and we need a third party and we need to break up this two-party system so when we come to the door and any third party that comes to the door that's legitimate um you know please l listen to that party <laughs> doesn't have to be us i'm just saying we need to expand our democracy and we need a third party and we need a third option which is where which is one of the big big things that we need to talk about i think but so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask this question because i need to ask yeah, this question ahead. now okay so that third party option are you yeah. are you willing to state here right now on the record for everyone who's listening to this who's watching this that you will run 87 candidates across this province so that all residents of alberta have that potential third option in the 2023 general election wow amazing um no i cannot say that we will run 87 but that is our goal um we can do will you run one in party. fort mcmurray lac labish by-election in the by-election uh in 2023 where we're not ready so what we're doing is we're, this is kind of what i was getting at was we need to support our candidates and ensure that we have um all the resources that they need to feel uh safe secure heard and uh that they can represent the party properly i have i ha i myself and, and our team have been working our buns off to get this party to a legitimate place where we can represent as that third party um that doesn't mean and this is the thing um with parties and, and politics is they want you to fake it till you make it and they want you to play magical tea set um yeah let's pretend that we have candidates in all these ridings that are going to represent you no the candidate is the most important part of politics what the candidate is the most important part the most it's not about the leader it's not about the party it's about the candidate that will actually represent and vote for what you care about in the legislature so that is the priority. I can't say that I want to, okay, I want to have 87. I think we'll have 87. We've opened up um, our vetting process and our nominations. And so go to our website and check it out. Uh, we are moving to a new website, uh, which is a big deal and I'm pretty stoked about it. But for now, go to the old website, put in your, you know, put in your vetting. Maybe, maybe you want to run for us, maybe you don't, regardless. Um, I'm not doing the paper candidate thing. Uh, it doesn't represent democracy. It goes back on what I've just been talking about as far as having candidates that mean something, um, votes that mean something. Uh, this party partisan uh, stuff, it's creating a lot of this distrust. That's why no one can, no one trusts what politicians are gonna do once they're elected. It's because they're whipped and they're not there for the right reasons, or they think this is a good opportunity to go do something else or, or get a, a corporate um, job after they're done because they helped out one industry over another and they're gonna get paid back. Like this is brutal and this has to stop. And so one way, uh, just the general population can end this right here and right now is to just start looking at who the candidates are and to actually vote for where their value system is not the lesser of two evils we need a third party this will never change we're flip flopping back and forth between the ndp and the ucp it looks like that's a really sad state of affairs because you're not working towards the betterment of the province you are basically working to erase everything that the parties have done beforehand and 
you know, sometimes the parties amazingly, you know, get it right. Uh, and that needs to be also acknowledged. And with oppositional politics, that is never acknowledged. No one's working towards a better uh, future when you're basically trying to burn the past. So that's the opportunity here is to get in a third party like the Greens um, that can uh, come in and keep people accountable and not only keep the people accountable, but imagine if we started collaborating. Now, I know that that would hurt uh, the, the fundraising campaigns for the UCP and the NDP because, I mean, if you've got a big bad enemy, then you're going to make more money. And that's what they're doing. Every time I get a donation request, it's because Ali's bad and Kenny's bad. <laughs> but there's, there's, we're not elevating this conversation and we're certainly not representing the people. This is teams. This is, this is team blue versus team orange. Uh, this is not okay. We need a minority government and we need to work towards a coalition government. I mean, we need to legislate proportional representation. If you want a way out of this mess, I mean, you can, you can join the Green Party. We can campaign our asses off, and uh, maybe you know what would it look like if we if we ran on the fact that we would legislate proportional representation and we could end this mess completely? What is that? How does that sound to the to the population of Alberta? Um, why don't we give power back after that, and we can have another election under proportional representation, and we can work together? Wow, it's like. Imagine we could actually end this garbage and we could start working towards a better future. That's, you know, you can, you can say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Ah, I love uh, it. Yeah. So cheesy. <laughs> I love it. I love, love that song. <laughs> um, okay. So we've talked about values. We've talked about rebranding. We've talked about the party. We've yeah. talked about yeah. you running in Banff, Kananaskis. I now want to turn the topic for the last few minutes here to what you're hearing. Now, as uh, anyone who has not been living under a rock knows, we have been in a pandemic and people have been stuck mm -hmm. at home. People have been working from home mostly who can. Uh, as a leader of a provincial party, you have to travel this province. As much as people might think Edmonton and Calgary are the center of the universes, dear God, there's smaller communities out there that you might have to go out and visit. No, what are you, well, yeah, absolutely. What are you hearing on the doorstep? What are you hearing when you crisscross this province? When you talk to people who, A, agree with what you are talking about, but B, who aren't agreeing with you and want to have a discussion, an actual discussion, God forbid, about politics in 2022. Yeah, I think that what we're hearing is kind of a lot of what we've been talking about. And, and this is where, you know, I'm not making this, this what I, my, the dialogue that I've talked about today, I'm not making this up. This is coming from the people of Alberta. This is coming from the people that I've been talking to that they don't feel like they have a political home and they're voting for the lesser of two evils. And this is a huge problem. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we have, a um, you know, we have a chance in 2023 to, to, to switch things up. And I don't know. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, for the people of Alberta about direction. And I think that, Unless we open up uh, new industry, uh, new forms of, of, of job, uh, job direction and, and, uh, and job boom opportunities within the green sector, unless we look at ways to properly support our farming industry that you know, is going to be needed to not only feed Alberta, but the world, we have an opportunity of our lifetime. And that's not just, I mean, again, we have, we're in transition, whether we like it or not. We're this is a transitory, you know, uh, time now with COVID and um, with uh, climate issues and with a lot of issues. I mean, I mean, we can also get into our public sectors, which is you know, okay. I'll get into it now. Our public sectors are under attack, and that's absolutely um, unacceptable. Uh, teachers are freaking out. 37% of teachers want to leave this province or quit. That is a emergency. That is put your emergency hat on, get your vest on. 
uh, we something is wrong and we need to fix it. And it's the same thing for doctors. It's the same thing for nurses. It's the same thing. We, how are we in two years, more than two years of a pandemic and we haven't built up our healthcare capacity and actually we've undermined it in ways and, and our ambulance coverage and our ambulance services. Like, why haven't we done anything to build the capacity? Why haven't we set up COVID clinics to keep people out of the hospital system that is already, already absolutely overworked, understaffed and at full capacity, you know, even before COVID, this was already a problem. So it's nothing new. And the fact that we haven't built capacity and there was a weird framing. And I think it was basically, this is, this is the problem with, with politics and, and everything is in opposition is that, oh, don't build capacity. What does that mean? You just want more people to get sick? No, okay, this is, <laughs> this is response. There's four pillars of an emergency. There's mitigation, there's preparedness, there's response and there's recovery. And of course, we're, we're trying to jump to recovery and we're not done the response. Uh, preparedness was brutal, mitigation was nil. And the entire time it's been politicized, which causes another host of issues, especially trust, we keep talking about because why are politicians um, politicizing uh, border, border blockades? Why are they politicizing COVID? Why are they politicizing our job sector? Why are they politicizing everything? Because it's all they know how to do, I guess. But at the same time, it's not advantageous for the people. We need to fix the education issues. We need to, we need to scrap the curriculum. We need to ensure that we have support for the most foundational. And again, these are green jobs, the foundations of education, the foundations of, you know, there was a Concordia strike where the university is making millions of dollars and, and the, the staff is working their hands to the bone. It's not okay. There's no EAs in the classroom to help support these teachers. There's no, um, the, the class sizes are insane. If you want to talk about COVID uh, prepara- uh, or re- response in the classroom and everyone's focused on masks and things like that, how about less kids in that classroom? Not only will they get a better education, but it's safer and you can utilize a better bubble for track and trace and all these things. So there's just a million things that we're not doing. And uh, I think that when I go to the door, I think people are at this, everyone's overwhelmed. How can you not be overwhelmed? I'm, I mean, I'm overwhelmed just having that, that conversation with you right now, because I'm like, what, where do I stop? And how do, where do I keep going? There's, there's so many fundamental essentials that are not resilient. I'm going to keep using these words. They're not resilient. Our education system, it's been destabilized. Healthcare, destabilized. Uh, The utilities are uh, through the roof right now. People can't pay their bills. Um, You know, that's one thing the NEP got right for sure. They put a cap on it. You know, I'll give credit where credit is due. This is insane. Um, How is this fair to have people price fixing and monopolizing and, and that's not just utility it's the uh, telecom services that's groceries um you know there's a lot of issues and you can blame inflation all you want but we're seeing that people are taking advantage and people continue to take advantage of other people and until we start calling uh out this it's a bit of a mess <laughs> calling out this mess and actively collaborating to work on it Imagine a government that actively said, okay, got some trouble. Here's, here's some points that we need to focus on and prioritize and imagine the watching government work together. That's the green dream. That's what they're doing in BC. They want to collaborate. That's what they're doing in Ontario. They want to collaborate. That's what they're doing in PI as the, as the official opposition. They're collaborating. Can you believe that? Can you imagine that the NDP like, and the UCP were listening to each other? And that's a problem. That's a massive problem that we need to fix. I and vote. so when I go out, go when I go out to the doorsteps, that's I'm ah, I'm getting that back at me. There, there's so much negativity, and it's coming back at me as if it's you know my fault. Um, <laughs> by being a politician, it's I'm, I'm part of it. And okay, I'll take that on. Um, but again, if if just working class people under the you know for the for the right reasons are getting into politics if people who feel unheard especially the indigenous especially uh, the people of color that are that are unheard in our society 
um, the people that are advocating for the people in poverty that can't advocate for themselves, the disabled community, like these people are not being heard. That's, you know, you know, and I'm listening to them. I'm getting phone calls from them and I want to help. Um, but I also need them to get involved. And what I, the best way to help is to give people a vehicle. Now, a lot of people don't want to step into politics because it's kind of scary. It is, it is kind of scary. You're going to take some flack. Um, but if we don't step up, no one else will. And there's a lot, oh my God, there's just so many good people out there. And we constantly hear about the bad, constantly hear about bad politicians. And there's good politicians too. Uh, I feel like a lot of them are stifled or misdirected from the top, but there's a lot of good people and we need to have more good people involved for the right reasons. And that's really where, where, where I, how I show up on the doorstep and dialogue, I'm listening, 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 listening. And yes, we will be uh, driving around uh, the province. Um, I have a, a hybrid electric plug-in, so I'm gas and electric, right? Rebrand, right? I'm not just electric. Gas too. <laughs> uh, well, I know it's so I, cheesy. I, I will but, probably uh, we, see you on the road because we're taking the show on the road here in this in no way in June to hit every yeah. single municipality, all 316 cities, towns, and MDs nice. to talk about talk to the Reeves. But that anyone who's listening to the show, you you know the 30 second pitch that I've done. But I want to ask this question because you, you're talking about yeah, communications sure. and dialogue, because yeah, you, you made mention the fact that. Rachel Notley and Jason Kenny probably aren't at home each night calling each other and having a good long 20 minute conversation mm -hmm. about the state of politics. Will you talk to a member of the UCP? Will you talk to an NDP uh, person who has a conversation with you? Because I think in we politics to. today, there's a lot of concern that we don't want to hear the other side. And this is where my show comes in because I'm willing to have a conversation with anyone. I love conversations like I'm having with you um, because I'm willing to just sit here and listen because sometimes you need to listen. Sometimes you need to listen to people and sometimes it's interesting to find out where they come from and love them, hate them, whatever. But having that conversation with someone you may disagree with completely is great in a divided uh, year that we are in with social media being the cesspool that it is with political rhetoric out the wazoo will you pledge or even are you talking to people of the other parties to just say how's life how can we work together mm -hmm. okay well first of all we have to <laughs> we have to have these we have to have these conversations and we have to talk to people that maybe we disagree with and we have to find common uh we have to meet in the middle um and that might just seem logical but it's so necessary and of course i am willing to work with everyone ucp ndp you name it i'm really really um looking forward to helping move alberta politics in a way where we can collaborate and that was one of the first things i did as a leader I started calling up the other leaders and some people were open to it and some people weren't. And we, I had um, uh, conversations and meetings with some of the other parties. We talked about, you know, what's possible as far as collaboration and, and what's best for Alberta. And, you know, do we want to do some events together to show that it doesn't have to be so nasty? Uh, these were conversations that we had. I, I found there wasn't a lot of follow through, um, but I am, it shows how open people are when you do, um, approach them in that way and I think that you know I feel really um I feel really sad I guess sad or I have a lot of sympathy for the for this situation that the UCP and the NDP have put themselves in because they've created this vile toxic relationship and you're going to see in 2023 the mudslinging and I know that it's good for their bank accounts right this is part of the reason why they do it um but there's no way back. You have to, you have to build a, a, a bridge, even if it's for, you know, sometimes you need to retreat across that bridge. Sometimes you need to meet in the middle of that bridge. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes there's a way forward that uh, the parties are not, because they're not having the dialogue, they, they're so busy with their own partisan politics that they can't, they can't come to the right decisions for the people of Alberta 
if we don't have a third party in the middle, at least breaking up that uh, dynamic, we're in big, big trouble. And so wherever you can vote in um, a third party uh, or you wanna get involved with the Greens to be that third party, uh, that's the opportunity where we can stop the uh, toxicity within politics and we can start working towards better for the province on all fronts. So how can people get involved? How can people get involved? Is there a website? You talked about it, but you haven't given the There's a link. website. <laughs> That's important. Uh, www.alberta, Green Party of Alberta. Sorry, sorry. Green Party of Alberta uh, Again, we're, we're rebuilding our website, but right now you can go on, get involved. The youth membership is free. Anyone under 30, your voice counts because what we do today is going to affect you deeply and we don't want to have any barriers for the youth and people are struggling students need help they need support and uh, you know even ten dollars for a membership can can be you know uh, the barrier that stops people getting involved in, in politics and we need to have that civic engagement and we need to increase civic literacy within our province so this is an opportunity for the youth to come and and join up and, and get involved and what we want to do is give them meaningful uh opp opportunities within the party so that they start learning uh how to be the politicians of tomorrow and uh start uh, basically vocalizing uh what they care about because again we need the z generation like i'm a millennial i'm the only millennial leader but we need the z generation also to step up and uh this is my personal invitation to the Z generation, step up, get involved. There's a poem here and there's a way for us to make it what is important for you and for the future of, uh, you know, not just uh, yourself, but your families and, and for the people of Alberta. Uh, so get involved, get on, get involved in our socials. Uh, we need volunteers. Uh, if you want to be a candidate, if you're interested, we have all candidates meetings every month. Uh, we're very active. And uh, we'll be driving around to all the different uh, ridings also. So if you want to meet us, talk more, um, just you know, follow our socials and we'll start announcing that uh, very soon. Uh, I think the next one might be in Drayton Valley. Um, and we're basically uh, ready to, to create some positive politics within, imagine positive politics within uh, the province. So yeah, I, you know, it's easy to get down on the state of affairs. Uh, it's it's easy to also put your finger up and say, F you, I'm going to protest this and you don't represent me. Uh, what's harder is to get involved and to uh, to get into uh, a system that allows you to fix the errors that that are so prevalent. Um, it's it's an opportunity for us to get involved uh, in, in democracy. And, and I invite everyone to you know stretch a little bit come out and see what see, see what it is and, and that it's not so such a, a beast or, or 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 scary or or exclusive you have a home uh and that that home is the green party of alberta that's my job to make that a safe place and an engaging space and an inspiring space um for to be the vehicle of change in this province we pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Last question before I start my wrap up here, Jordan, is right on. Are you optimistic about the future? Because uh, we've talked about a lot of things that are going on and getting involved is key. But mm. we are in a weird place right now. We are seeing the rise of the independence movement here in the province of Alberta. Mm. We right. are seeing people being more divided. Are you optimistic about the future of Alberta? being able to unite again and being that province that was such a beacon of hope and opportunity that so many people came here for from out west, out east, or sorry, out east in Newfoundland, Ontario, where I'm from. Are you optimistic for the future of Ontario, uh, for, of, of Alberta? <laughs> I, I have to be optimistic or else I couldn't do what I'm doing. Um, I'm a realist. I 
I'm, you know, I, I'm in the SHIT with my job. I, uh, with my background in disaster management, this is, I see what's coming. So um, there's a level of, there's a level of, of, of reality that, that needs to set in that there's bigger problems than that are coming. And I know that we've just been through COVID and I know that people are tired. Um, what we saw with the start of COVID, that we're all in this together, that mantra, that, that vibe has to come back and we have to start working together. If we don't come together now, we're in big trouble. If we don't come together, if we can't see that we are interconnected, that we depend on each other, that we depend on our environment, that we depend on our industry, that we depend on our education systems, our healthcare systems, that we depend on our emergency systems, which are all taking a hit. We don't realize that tomorrow is important. We're in big trouble. And if we can't uh, talk to people that we may disagree with and um, start connecting again, uh, we need inter intermittent We need a referee. Uh, we can't have, you know, mother and father in the legislature yelling at each other because what does that do to the house, right? Think about that. If you have an abusive relationship with your parents, what does that do to the family? What does that do to the house? That is what we're living in right now. And this is what we're voting for in 2023. So we have the power. We have, we have to stand up and we have to take back that power that this is not we're not gonna to, to be okay with the scraps where we can eradicate poverty, we can fix social issues that 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 for some reason we haven't fixed yet just because we haven't legislated things. There's so many ways that we can um, evolve our society and protect our future. And that's not a pipe dream. So yes, I'm optimistic. It's not, it is when you get into politics too and you see all the useless stuff that we talk about and this useless stuff that, that the media is talking about you start understanding that we can do more than we can do a lot more than we're giving ourselves credit for we have the capacity we have the money um every oh we're how are you going to pay for it are you kidding me the job boom in the green sector it's like you know we have to wake up to the opportunities that are all around us and the ability for us to move in a direction that is uh that is going to elevate not just our political um our political environment which is toxic but uh alberta as a whole because the divisions that we're seeing and our inability to create dialogue and there's uh, the big split between rural and urban and indigenous and settler uh these are getting uh wider these gaps are getting these these divisions i feel like are getting wider and uh there's also that comes down also to the fact that inequality is in our society is also uh, getting wider. Um, so when we get the scarcity mentality that we can't feed our kids and somebody's going to take something away from us, we're fighting over the scraps at the table. We have to demand better. And I can tell you that the government isn't doing their job to ensure that the people uh, are taken care of. They're not doing it. And so unless average people, emergency workers, doctors, uh, teachers, you know, I invite you come together and we can ask for something more, demand something more. And we can do that in the halls of power. So we have to ensure that in the next election, we vote in for the candidate, not the party. And that we ensure that that candidate <clears throat> is going to represent uh, this consti the constituency properly and will be a voice of reason within the, the government. If we don't have voice of reason, uh, if we can't represent our constituencies uh, properly and the people, the general population, then this will, as you said, continue to be uh, more and more toxic. Uh, we'll continue to have more mudslinging in the legislature. We'll continue to be going down these um, political agendas uh, that don't serve the people. And I think that we can ask for more, we can demand more, and that we have the capacity as a province that is so rich in resources, rich in workforce, uh, technology, 
uh, our, our systems are, are, we have a, a chance of a lifetime to be leaders in so many areas that we're not even like our manufacturing industry needs, uh, you know, to, to get a boost and uh, our, our tech industries need to get a boost. And there's, there's so many opportunities we can, you can utilize within the energy sector that it's just, we have the manpower, we have the technology, we have the resources, everything is there. And we're not, uh, we're not allowing the evolution of our province to happen. And I think that that serves a small group. And that's the, that's the problem that we need to deal with as a general population. We need to break out of identity politics. We need to break out of, of our, our identity with, with whether it's I'm this and I'm that, and I love oil and gas. And, you know, that's great. You can love that, but you know, understand also that it's majority foreign owned. So who, who is benefiting? Who is benefiting from uh, your work, your sweat? Is it you? And that's where the Green Party really wants to, you know, ensure that we're standing up for uh, the, the workforce and that we're not, we are not anti-industry, we are pro-worker. And so until um, we can continue to, to inform people who we really are and what we really stand for, um, you know, we're going to have a hard time, but I think that, again, I'm going to say one more time, there is an opportunity for resilience. There's an opportunity um, for something better than what we have in this province. And the way we're heading, uh, especially when we're, we're, when we're moving into more climate issues, when we're, the drought issues that are already taking place within our agricultural system and, and our ability to, to support our public services, um, if we can't make a change now, then... Um, we're gonna have a really hard time uh, over the next five to 10 years and we'll be paying for it. So this election is critical. And uh, please get involved, get involved in politics, get involved in, in, in civic engagement, get involved, you know, thank you Chris so much for this, for this podcast, for, for you know, getting the messages out from a diverse group of, of, of people that are trying, you know, trying to, trying to hopefully elevate the, the political spectrum because, Right now, we need change, and uh, unless people stand up and 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 demand that change, we're we're not going to get it. And don't settle, don't settle for a party that is the lesser of two evils. Don't settle for something that doesn't go along your values, and uh, don't settle for selling out today uh, on the back of tomorrow. And on that note, I will say, do not do not be bought do not buy into the fact that you have to vote for a party because you will be voting against the only way to keep out a certain party you have to vote for another party strategic voting does not work vote like jordan said for your morals your values yeah. and who you best want to represent you at the end of the day it's your vote no one else can make that decision for you but yourself so go into the ballot box and make an X or check mark beside the name of the person you want who represents your values. Jordan, I wanna thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure. Um, for anyone who's listening or watching, I remember the links in the show notes uh, to Jordan's Twitter and also to the Green Party of Alberta's website, social media handles are there. So please click on it, get involved learn a little bit more, reach out to Jordan, ask the questions that you might want to ask that we didn't get to today. But Jordan, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure. And I guarantee you, I'm going to put money on it right now. I will be talking to you before the May 2023 election is called. So I look forward to having you back on to talk about politics and the Green Party again. Amazing, Chris. Thank you so much for doing this. Um... I you know wish you well. I I I know you're going through some health issues, and and I, I I wish you the best, and and I I commend you for for having on a, a diverse group of speakers, and and I think that it's so exciting to be part of this, and I look forward to doing it again and giving you an update of how it's going on the uh, on the road to 2023. Awesome. So for everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews with Christopher Brown, have yourself an excellent day, and remember everyone. Get out from behind that keyboard and just have a conversation with somebody. Talk to you later.